Hey everybody, this is Jeremy from Gadgetel, and what you are seeing here is an evolution of Nexus 7 cases by a company called Blurex. Blurex was really fast out of the gate uh, selling cases for the Nexus 7 uh, shortly after it was announced and what you see here are the three different incarnations that their cases have gone through uh, starting from the earliest on the left all the way up to the latest on the right. Uh, the very first case for the Nexus 7, this one here, was uh, recalled shortly after it was uh, released uh, because the uh, Nexus 7 it didn't fit properly on the inside. It would slide around a bit. Uh, the stand function on the back uh, was a little bit cumbersome because you had to take it back around like this and stick it into the flap and then set it down. It wasn't bad. Us, us, the stand function uh, but you know it, you can tell that it could be better and also it didn't have the automatic on off function uh, due to the the magnet in the case that can turn the Nexus 7 on and off so Blurex um, replaced the case for a lot of people and then they moved on to this one which was the uh, Magic Folio case which was a lot better than the very first case that they had and I did a video on this case not too long ago and it does have the automatic on off functionality when you close the case the Nexus 7 goes off and when you open it it turns back on and uh, it also did away with the little back flap for the stand in favor of velcro so these were the little velcro inserts here and then when the tablet was inside you would just do like this and it made it into a stand um, which was a really neat feature, although, uh, like some people would tell you, Vel Velcro eventually wears off. And while I do not know how long the Velcro in this particular case would hold out on average, uh, I do know that eventually it will wear off. And this case was really dependent on Velcro. There's Velcro here to keep the tablet inside with this flap that you kind of just secure it in place. And the stand portion uh, relies on Velcro entirely. Uh, another thing about the Magic Folio case was it wasn't really that great when you wanted to bend it backwards. The spine was so stiff. It almost feels like you're going to wear it out if you keep bending it back like this. And uh, lastly, uh, one of the biggest uh, complaints that I have uh, seen and read uh, dealt with the, um, with the width of, of, uh, of the case when it surrounded the bezel. So when a tablet was on the inside, if you wanted to go over to the edge to move something to another home screen or pull down for notifications, uh, this was kind of in the way. And I, I did find myself kind of having to go under it sometimes just to uh, pull down notifications. Uh, so it, it was some things uh, that wasn't quite right with this case, but I still think that it was a pretty nice case, especially for the price. At what I bought it from, from the, at the time. But now here is the latest case. This is the Blurex Ultra Slim case for the Nexus 7. As you can tell, this is a radical design change from the Magic Folio case. I mean, look at that, and then look at that. It is, it is miles apart. And it seems like Blurex is uh, just learning uh, the, about the best way to make a case for the Nexus 7. I think that this is their best effort yet. Um, you can get this on Amazon. It's $13.99 at the time, which is the same case last time I checked as the Magic Folio case, but if you had to pick one, I would say you know, more than likely go with this one. And what this case does differently from the Magic Folio case is that for one, all Velcro is gone. There is no Velcro at all. Uh, in its place are these six claw like grips and I have my Nexus 7 right here I want to show you how how uh, you can put this on best indicator is to look for the speaker grills at the very bottom and just know like okay well that's the direction that you're gonna put your tablet in so you just put it in like this and then they just kind of grip the tablet on all sides you know it just kind of folds over there like a glove and from there, as you can see, it just, it fits, you know, it's nice and stiff. And also, it closes like this with another little claw-like grip that goes around the, goes around the, the corner like that. And the on-off functionality, auto on-off functionality is also present. So I open it, 
turns on and I begin to close it can you see it, it goes off and then back on again so that's cool I just just unlock it another thing that this case does is you can add, you can fold it around the other side so unlike the magic folio case which you could do it but you know it just didn't really feel right because look at all that bulk you got back there this one sits pretty much completely flush from the back side now when you do have it like this you may see that the case like oh you can it's kind of slipping and sliding around I, oh i don't like that well that's why they also added this this is an elastic band that if you want you can just kind of put around the very edge of the tablet and when you do that it holds the back in place so that it doesn't slide around when you have it folded um, I, I, I think that there might be some concerns with this elastic band because there's an elastic band on the front of your tablet but to its credit it doesn't get in the way of the screen it sits almost almost perfectly on the boundary between the bezel and the actual screen um, as you see up here it, it kind of covers the the two in the 920 uh, but then again that is also the farthest uh, the farthest icon or indicator or whatever on the Nexus 7 is, is, is the clock up there. Nothing else goes quite that far. So if you can look past that, uh, just know that the majority of things that you look at aren't going to be obstructed by the elastic band. So just for example, if I go into uh, Google Books and I wanted to read something, you see that I can still read from left to right and the band isn't blocking when I'm trying to read. Uh, same thing goes for uh, websites. So if I can just open up Amazon really quickly, this is the uh, the product page for the ultra slim case for the Nexus 7. You see like the band doesn't necessarily, I mean it can get in the way. If you were to zoom in and you were trying to read something like this, you know, you, it, it might slightly get in your way. But for the most part, is really just the the sight of the band being on your tablet that might make you go oh, I don't really but you know if you don't like it it's not like you have to use it you can just flip it back and it fits right along the, the back side here so you don't have to worry about it and when you're walking around as long as you have a pretty nice grip on the tablet it won't slide around anyway um, so that's something you can take it or leave it you can cut it off if you want and uh, speaking of grip, this case also has a hand strap right there, which is nicely, it fits in nicely with the interior of the tablet, so you kind of won't even know it's there. It looks like it's a part of like, well, it's just part of the design, you know, whatever, no big deal. But it's actually a hand strap. And what it's used for is when you flip it over to the back and then you'll be able to hold it from the back. Now, when you do this, I found that it's not a good idea to put your whole hand back there because when you do that, you're holding you're holding it at an awkward angle. You can see like my wrist is kind of, and my arm is kind of bent out, my elbow is out to the side, and you're kind of like clawing it, and clawing it is not the way to hold this tablet. You can feel the strain on your arm when you do that. So I found the best way to do it is just kind of, just put as much of your fingertips as you can into the strap you know just so like your finger your fingertips are just coming out of the of the end there and then when you do that you're still able to cradle it with your palm and your thumb just as if you were holding it without a case and it's it, and it's quite good if you're lying down in bed because when you're lying down in bed without the strap and you're holding it like this in bed straight up and then when you want to go turn a page in a book or if you want to slide down from the top you have to kind of bend the tablet back because if you just have it like this and you try to and you try to swipe down from the top you know what's going to happen is you're going to lose your grip see how shaky it's getting with me because I'm and I'm and I'm moving the tablet backwards away from me 
and uh, you know it just gets worse if you're just and I'm sitting up right now I'm sitting down but if I were laying flat down on the bed it will be even harder to move across from left to right or swipe down but when you have your hands inside the little strap here you don't have to worry about that especially if you're lying down because you'll be able to do those things so if I want to just move the page I can keep it completely horizontal and I can just do this and I can just do this and I don't have to worry about it falling out of my hand and uh, swiping down you can also do that but it doesn't this is still going to be a two-handed device you know uh, make no mistake you're still going to need your other hand to do something but if you're just sitting if you're just in the bed reading and you're completely lying down then the strap can't the uh, the the what do you call this thing exactly the little hand holdy thingy in the back is you know, my mind have a mind fart uh, it can really definitely come in handy because you don't have to tilt the tablet and be all weird with it when you're trying to navigate, you know, because you want to keep it, you want to keep it safe. Another thing about this case is that it also has, it also has a stand feature. It can stand up. And here's the thing. If you try to make it stand up while all of the clips are in place, you can see you're not going anywhere. It's completely stuck. So what you have to do is unhook the top left and the bottom left grips here and then it frees up the tablet to fit into three different positions. You can make, take it all the way to the front. front let's, go to, uh, let's go to an app that supports landscape. Here's the TED app. So you can have it uh, all the way out in front and there's two more grooves. So this is position one and then this is position two and then the very last groove is position three I think that uh, the third position uh, is the most sturdy it's not as angled as the other two naturally but I feel that it is more sturdy uh, because you know it, you can't necessarily it feels less flimsy if I have it like in the second in the second groove here I mean, it just feels like I can touch something and it kind of starts to go for itself, especially if you uh, touch it at the top with just a little bit of force. But if, but if you have it straight up like this, I mean, you can still knock it down. But to me personally, it just feels stronger when you do it like this. And, and, it's, and it's good to, for, for watching videos. If I just wanted to watch this video here, you can see how well it plays. And if I want to angle it all the way here, I want it to be closer to me, you know, it sits just fine. I mean, as long as you're not trying to poke down at it and you're putting a lot of pressure on it, it won't go for itself. But the biggest, um, but out of this feature, the biggest restriction, I guess, that you would have and the thing that you would have to remember is that you have to unhinge the bottom two grips here. And when you're done, you just plop them back in and then you're good to go again and uh, also with this case if you uh, ever want to use a stylus there is a loop here for a stylus um, you know you know styluses or styli or whatever you want to call them they're not just for resistive touch screens um, there are some uses for capacitive styluses or styli I keep saying styluses on um, on capacitive screens, uh, it might be for a more artistic type thing or whatever. But if for for whatever reason you were carrying this around, you also had a stylus that you use with the Nexus Seven, a capacitive stylus, you can just put it right there. And all the ports are completely open. Uh, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there's the speaker, the speaker holes right there, and then you know there's your charging port, there's your headphone jack, and then on this side the volume switches and the power outlet. The only thing that's not exposed is on this side. See, like these little inserts. I forget what what these are called, but um, uh, they are allegedly for a uh, accessory that ASUS uh, will come out with, and you'll be able to use it for that. But so far, really, no one has really found a big commercial use for it, so it's really no big deal at this point. But yeah, um, these are just my first impressions of the case. I don't want to do a uh, full review right here because I want to give it more time you know just in case something goes horribly wrong I'm gonna be able to tell you about it so I'll have a full written review on Gadgetel soon but until then those are just my first impressions of the Blurex Ultra Slim 
case for the Nexus 7. Once again, it's on Amazon right now for $13.99. Um, that's before shipping, but I still think that it's a very good price uh, considering there's some more cases out there. Rough like 35 or 40 bucks, and you know, it may have some bells and whistles, you know, whatever, but you know, this has a lot of bells and whistles too. And it feels good, it does not feel cheap, and uh, it offers decent protection when it's closed. Of course, when it's open, the entire thing's exposed, but you know, besides that, very slim profile. You know, you can still put this into a bag, no problem, a purse or, or anything. You don't have to worry about too much bulk. So, yeah, go ahead and check that out if you like. And uh, it's gotten pretty good reviews so far and, in my opinion, for good reason. So, until next time, I'm Jeremy from Gadgetel, and I'll see you in the next video.